Hey guys, we're back in the uh, Glaze uh, kiln room today. Um, I just want to talk real quickly about something that I get asked about a lot. How thick should a glaze be? Or how thick should a glaze look on a piece before we go to um, put it in the kiln? And this is a test tile I made. And one test that I think helps a lot of people is to take a needle tool and, and on your test tile, if you can make a mark through it and kind of scratch away a little area, you can kind of see the depth. You can see the depth of the, of the glaze. And, and how deep is that? Well, if I'm looking at it, you can see there's a nice little, little chip there that this, this underglaze, or the, not the underglaze, the first coat that I did is really thin, you know, but it's still thick enough that I can scratch a bunch off. The second one, the second coat right here, you can see the thickness of that, it's hard to see in the camera, but if you're, if you're that thick, you know you're going to get some good color. This one dip isn't supposed to make a lot of color. There's not enough colorant and oxides in there. Uh, to make any real nice color, even with a really dark glaze, you're, you're still going to get a lighter version of that. So if you want, on just one little section of your test tile, scratch it a little bit. See, what, see if it falls away, and then look at the edge that gets exposed after that's dry. And the other thing that I can tell you is, is to look at the detail. So here you can see all this detail in the test tile, these deep grooves here. As I go over one dip, that starts to disappear. It, it's muted a little bit. And then as I go for this um, third, or I'm sorry, second dip, you can see that it's mostly covering. Um, and you can see little particles in here from where it wasn't, wasn't quite mixed enough. Um, probably could have run that through a ball mill. But this glaze is pretty reliable without doing that. So um, we've had pretty good luck. And a lot of people say, well, you know, oh, I got you know, kind of a drip here or I got a little mark here, that will fill in. As the glaze turns to turns molten, it's going to gel together and we'll probably cover stuff like that. I mean, that, no, you're not going to cover that. It's going to be visible. But if you have little marks and drips like this, people worry about that. They get real concerned. What's that going to look like? Or, or they worry about flakes or little cracks. Don't worry about that. All right? We won't worry about waiting long enough in between coats, getting a good solid coat on here and and checking to make sure that it's deep enough to generate color. If you guys put these test tiles back here and there's not enough glaze on them, there's no point in me firing it if it's not going to be a positive result. So one coat of anything that thin, you got nothing on there. I see a lot of pieces I'm looking around right now and I can see a lot of pieces that don't have enough on it. As I got to scratch a little corner of it, you know, if I see something like this, and I can actually see the corner of the bisque through there. Can you see the color difference? The bisque is this color. And if I can see that through the glaze on this corner, I, it tells me right away, this is not thick enough. It's not going to do anything. It's going to fizzle. Okay? Unfortunately, this person's from last semester, so I can't put it on the see-me shelf. But there's nothing to scrape away here. It's just bisque. So be careful. Look for the appropriate thickness. Um, if you want good color, you got to have enough to scrape away on a piece. You can't just kind of cross your fingers and hope that color comes out. Do your best to, to look at that and scratch it a little bit. Understand how thick you're uh, loading the glazes on. That's it. Happy glazing.